What's up, trickies? Hi, so we've got double video today because it's gonna be long. I've split it into two. They're pertinent to each other. So if you really care about whatever. So they're both up. One's about the anniversary. One is about the lockbox because ship stats and ship stats don't want to put that all in one video. Plus I need to apparently explain Omega Molecules. Okay, welcome to the lockbox and ship stats for that video. We have the Discovery lockbox. And everyone was like, oh my God, look, it's Discovery. I haven't honestly watched it because CBS decided to put it behind a paywall. And everyone's like, you can just get it free. I was like, you know what? How about we wait for all of season one to be done, whenever that happens to be, and then I'll get my free week and then we'll binge it for free. And then we'll cancel the thing. It just, anyways, so that aside, we have the Discovery Lockbox. So it's coming out with the Discovery, which is a cross field class science vanguard. That's a new word in, to put after science. It's tier six, not really gonna go, and the lockbox, you know, I'm not gonna go much in about it because I'm gonna go over the stats here at the end of this video. Um, sarcophagus dreadnought carrier. Sounds like it's got one bay. Uh, it's the Klingon ship. Like I watched the first one because that was on TV and I was like, ooh, so I know about that ship. I know about these things. I just, or at least I know about the original ship, not the new one that's discovered. Because I don't know much about it. So, they're doing something different with the Romulans that they're able to pilot these two, either of these ships, but only the one for their faction. So I'm like, weren't they able to do that before? Weren't Romulans able to buy Federation ships? But usually in a lockbox, they come out with a Romulan version, but back then, hmm. So, due to the cross-faction availability, the above consoles may be equipped on any class of starship. So the Dreadnought Carrier and the Vanguard, Science Vanguard, have u fully universal consoles. The console pack for Federation have multi-target tractor arrays, which is from the Dreadnought Carrier, and the starship trait of Honored Dead. The Klingon will have the console pack, multi-target tractor arrays, and starship trait pack, Black Alert, which are from the Science Vanguard. Uh, they'll have another tier six ship, a light, a Walker class light exploration cruiser in the low buy store. So the lockbox doesn't have it, it'll be in the low buy store. I may pick that up if I have enough low buy, I'm not sure. Again, we'll go over the stats later here in the video. Uh, during, the, during the early encounters of the Klingon Empire, it became apparent that the only outward show of, only an outward show of force would earn the respect and open lines of communications with the warriors, the Vulcan hello. I have a memory about that one. The Vulcans were the first to adopt this tactic in a widespread manner. This technique's named for, named in honor for those early encounters. When entering combat, your weapons gain a shield and armor penetration bonus. Weapon power drain and from energy weapon activation is reduced for a brief duration. Strike first, strike hard. It is only logical. That's the starship trait. Oh, I was gonna go over that later confused about what's going on. This comes with new genetic resequencers, so ground traits and space traits. Uh, two ground, universal law is for lackeys. While in combat, each second you gain bonus damage if you haven't been damaged in the past second. Or a boost to damage resistance rating otherwise stacks up to 10 times. So if you're constantly under attack, you get a damage resistance rating buff. If you are basically out of combat, while you're in combat but you haven't been hit, like, you're, like someone's actually decently taunting, and you're not get, you get bonus damage. So it's benefit, and hopefully someone's taunting or has threatening presence up or whatever. Then the other one, Brutal Impetus. Nearby enemies dying increases your damage for a short time. Oh, okay. Wonder what they mean by nearby. 10 kilometer, 10 meters, 30 meters. Space, context is for kings. While in combat, each second, you gain bonus damage if you haven't been damaged, so it's the same thing. And then Duelist's Fervor, nearby enemies dying, increase your damage and accuracy rating for a short duration. Nearby, hmm, three kilometers? Scientists and engineers from our time have managed to get their hands on a few examples of personal tech from the era of Star Trek Discovery. 
the repli and replicated their techniques in the form of universal kit modules. Choose your pain, decrease target's damage resistance rating, target picks one of their nearby allies, a portion of the damage dealt to your primary target is also dealt to the foe chosen for pain this way. Parabellum, prepare for war. Anyone who shoots the marked target has their kit module's cooldowns reduced. Oh. My kit module things are already reduced by a lot anyways. I'm basically just using kit module stuff and like spamming one. Miniaturized spore re relay. Teleports you a short distance forward, leaving mines behind. Huh. Could be cool if you're running away, because usually you're running towards things. It's also possible that if you teleport out of combat, that would work. Rounding off the offerings of new equipment from the Discovery lockbox will be new unique space weaponry. When opened, each special equipment pack, Discovery, Disruptor, or Phaser weapons will offer the player a choice between Disruptor Beams, Disruptor Cannons, Phaser Beams, Phaser Cannon. Unlike most space weapons, these space weapons come in three variants, each of which grants a set of passives to your character while equipped. Emitter-linked weapons give an increase to shield restoration and shield capacity. Integrity-linked weapons give an increase to hull regeneration and hull capacity. And sensor-linked weapons give an increase to weapon amplification and defensive maneuvering. The min-maxers are going to have their heyday with that. The Discovery Lockbox also features a new type of space device, Minitech. Minitech are consumable devices that grant one activation of an ability otherwise found on a ship console. Oh, the ones available from the Discovery Lockbox will be the following abilities. Temporal Rift Stabilizer. Multi-dimensional Wave Function Analysis Module. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh god, you're real- you're seriously gonna give more players that ability? It's a kinetic- I'm gonna explain this one. It's a kinetic bubble. About five, three, three kilometers out, you get a bubble. It repels anything out of there. Targetable torpedoes, ships, not all ships. Obviously, you're not gonna be bushing Borg cubes out of the way or Voth Citadel ships. Anything big like that, but like, fighters, oh yeah. Everything gets hit. Not to mention, you get kinetic damage resistance rating while you have that. Also, you're immune to movement debuffs, so nobody can teleport you. And it reflects up to, and there's a blank, because I can get it up to about 2.1, and that's with my aux and various little things that affect it. Um, kinetic damage. I've literally seen a high yield three tricobalt device from a ship thrown at me. It was an NPC. And they threw it at me and I activated it because it's a Vesta console. And I threw up my bubble and it came in, hit the shield and got bounced right back off. But since that did damage, I, it sends a little boom. I hit that Odyssey class for 1.6 million damage. I literally looked it up in the combat log. I sent it to my fleet leader. He was like, that's disgusting. They're giving you guys that. Holy crap. Moving on to the other things that are in there. The enhanced induction coils, the shield destabilizer, and the ablative hazard shielding. Okay. That's cool. I'm looking for temporal rift stabilizer just because that sounds cool. But the kinetic bubble? Oh boy. People are going to be having fun with that. I hope it's kind of a neutered version. Anyway, so there'll be costumes. There's going to be an EV suit, it looks like. You know, just stuff from that era. A uh, little pet, the bug. Last but not least, if you're not afraid of creepy crawlies, there's an all new insect vanity pets that will be added to the low buy store. All right, so the stats for the ships. Factions restrictions. For the first time, we're allowing Romulan captains the opportunity to captain starships designed for their allied factions. Thus, the Federation allied Romulans are capable of commissioning the Walker and Crossfield class starships, while Klingon allied Romulans may find themselves at the helm of the intimidating sarcophagus vessel. So that's what I was talking about earlier. Uh, when the player wins the grand prize from the lockbox, they will automatically be awarded with the ship appropriate to their faction choice. The console and starship trait from the opposing faction will be made available as the prize option within the lockbox as well. While the Walker class may only be purchased on the low buy store by Federation captains, 
those allied and those allied with the Federation, KDF and KDF allied captains will be able to purchase a package containing the console and starship trait for a reduced price. So, what do we got here? Long engines and a lot of missing area in the saucer, but cool. It's tier six, Rear Admiral, 1.3 hull. Ooh, that's the hull modifier. 1.25 shield modifier. Eh, not great, but still good. I mean, it's not, not like super science vessel, but still works. Four in the front, three in the back, welcome to science. Three device slots, welcome to science. Commander Science, ooh, Lieutenant Commander Tactical, huh, Lieutenant Commander Universal slash Intelligence, okay, there's the Lieutenant Commander Science, I don't really use Intelligence abilities, so, Lieutenant Universal Temporal Operative, hmm, Ensign Engineering, hmm, okay, so I could pretty much bridge officer this thing back out as I normally do, except I'd have a Lieutenant Commander Tactical instead of a Lieutenant Tactical, because right now I only use Tactical Team and Cannon Rapid Fire too. Can you equip dual cannons? You can have dual cannons! You just can't have aux dual cannons, so. So, it's got five science, two engineering, four tactical for console slots, 10 weapon, 10 aux, can load dual cannons, but again, not the aux dual cannons, because that's only on the Vesta. Still, dual cannons are good. You just, anyways. So, here we are, sensor analysis, subsystem targeting, secondary deflector, boom. There's your, there's your, there's the triple threat science. To my, my book, this is officially a science vessel. Because, again, carriers have commander science sometimes. That doesn't, they don't have those, they don't have these three. Uh, console Universal, Mycelium Ambush? Is that the picture of Mycelium Amb- Anyways, the Starship Package, Exotic Damage, it says science vessel, shield hit points, plus healing, plus shield regen and hardness, and then Black Alert, which I said something earlier about. Mycelium Ambush, weapons offline, Teleports you forward. In, oh, instantaneously moves you forward. Teleports you. In a direction to a destination some distance from your current position. Upon arrival at your destination, a pulse of energy is discharged, impeding the engines of nearby ships while enhancing your own starship's weapons for a brief period. After a few seconds, multiple payloads of torpedoes are released, and your starship's weapons are briefly disabled again in order to instantaneously move backwards to your original position also known as the Lorca Maneuver. This console also provides a passive bonus to control expertise, drain expertise, exotic particle generators, and scientific readiness. I want that console. It seems perfect. I love it. I don't know what I'd give up for it. Maybe my Plasmonic Leech. No. Timeline Stabilizer? No. Ah, the choices! Black Alert. Starship Trade. For 12 seconds after activating beam overload, cannon rapid fire, or any intel bridge officer ability, weapon damage to foe creates a spore duplicate which attacks foe and up to two other foes dealing kinetic damage to each before disappearing. Base damage is approximately 4,000 per target at level 60. Up to four total spore duplicates may be created max once per three seconds. This trait only acts this trait may only activate once every 25 seconds. Okay, so it based, yeah. This probably is thematic to the show, but I don't know what it means. Again, as the lockbox has a little bug critter and this is talking about spore duplicates, and I thought mycelium was something gross. I'm like weirdly getting spoilers that I don't understand. <laughs> Anyways, Walker class light exploration cruiser. So it's a Moran, it's just tier six. Um, this is a resilient ship. The, okay, this was the ship from the pilot. Okay. 1.325 hull strength. Ooh, that's getting out there in the decimal points. 1.15 shield modifier. Five in the five weapons in the front, three in the back. Cool. Still a cruiser, though, but obviously an offensive cruiser. Lieutenant Commander Tactical. There's that. Commander Engineering. There's that. Lieutenant Commander Science. Oh. Lieutenant Universal slash Pilot. Oh, there we go. Ensign Engineering or Intelligence. So basically, you pick between Engineering or Intelligence, not both. Five Engineering, three Science, three Tactical. Plus five all power to subsystems. Cruiser Command, all four of them. And it's Cruiser Package. So damage, physical damage resistance, hull regeneration, energy damage resistance, max hull hit points, and then Vulcan Hello, which is the Starship trait, which I kind of talked about earlier. Obfuscation. 
screen. The unique suite of sensor screens succeed in convincing nearby foes that your starship has been disabled, though it comes with the requirement of holding the ship in place and preventing all abilities from being activated. Oh, you shut everything down. This mode may be disabled voluntarily at any time after a brief activation period, at which point the advantage gained from the ruse is translated into increased damage from all sources. Duration of this ambush bonus is equivalent to the amount of time your ship remained disabled, 20 seconds max. And then the Vulcan Hello. Upon entering combat, plus 20 energy weapon armor penetration for 8 seconds, plus 20 energy weapon shield penetration for 8 seconds, and minus 50% weapon power cost for 8 seconds. The starship trait seems really cool, uh, especially if you were to use it on, like, a strike ship. If you kind of play that style, where you run into combat really fast and just blow the crap out of stuff and then pull back out, wait for your cooldowns, and come back in. <laughs> I know I've seen some people do it. Pilot vessels are really good to do it because they can like <laughs> and then fly off. I mean, it's got a pilot thing, so who knows? Sounds pretty, sounds like a fun idea. Not really my play style, but you know. Please credit me if you start playing that way. Sarcophagus Dreadnought Carrier. I wonder if this thing's big. I mean, it is big in the show, but. And we've got 1.675 hull strength. So like a hundred, that's 167 and a half percent hull. So yeah, shield modifier, 1.05. So basically you have a neutral shield. <laughs> you put a shield on, you're getting a slight bonus out of it. Uh, possibly good to use a resilient shield at this point, especially with that much hull strength. Four weapons in the front, three in the back, three wep three device slots, well, it's a carrier. Commander tactical, ooh, a tactical carrier. Lieutenant commander engineering. Lieutenant Science, Ensign Universal Miracle Worker, so again, either whatever you want, or Miracle Worker. Lieutenant Commander Universal slash Command. Ooh, Command, nice. So you can have like Lieutenant Commander Tactical, Lu Commander Tactical, Lieutenant Command Commander Engineering, and if you can't figure out that many ca tactical abilities to use, put some Command abilities on there. Whew. Four Tactical, four Engineering, three Science, a little more rounded. 10 weapon, 10 ox, eh, it's a carrier, needs ox for the thing, can equipped with a cloaking device, subsystem targeting, can load dual cannons, two hangar base, I was wrong before, and it's loaded with Mokai Raiders, it's a tactical carrier, so that's quick deployment, which is hangar pet recharge time, armored hull, max hull, uh, bonus weapon damage, bonus max shield, and then honored dead. Console, multi-target tractor arrays. The console provides a passive bonus to control expertise, energy, damage, resistance, and turn rate. When the console's, when this console's power is activated, specially mounted tractor beam arrays capable of immobilizing and debilitating nearby foes will activate over a brief period of time. A total of 12 tractor arrays will be activated by this ability, each targeting nearby foes and severely slowing them while dealing a moderate amount of kinetic damage over directly to their hull. If any foe is caught by more than one tractor, they each, the damage of each is increased as the tractor beams tear the unfortunate ship in opposite directions while dragging them closer to the sarcophagus ship. Ow! This is going to, to slaughter Zenkethi's ships. Or Tholian. Ow. Anyways, honored dead. Uh, after receiving 10,000 cumulative damage pre-resistance, gain a stack of honored dead. Each stack of honored dead grants plus 20 all damage resistance rating and plus 2% hull regeneration, max 20 stacks. Infinite duration. While at 20 stacks and of honored dead, additional triggers instead of 10,000 temporary Additional triggers instead grant 10,000 temporary hit points for up to 40 seconds. While not in combat, lose one stack of honor dead every two seconds, unless cloaked. Oh snap. And then the raiders, despite the term raider, these are frigates, not, these are fighters, not frigates. So, it does not actually say how many are popped out at once, but since it's not a frigate, it's like two or three. They've got a disruptor beam array in the front, disruptor dual beam bank in the front, and a disruptor beam array in the back. 
They've got flyer apart, self damage buff at expense of damage over time, purpose purposely destabilize warp core, warp core breaches deal additional damage, like their own, provide shield materials, on death grant owner temporary hit points. Oh, okay. So that's that for the stats of this ship, and I will catch you guys next week. See what's going on. Um, I'd really like to maybe get the Crossfield Science Vanguard, but again, it's like the super high price ship, and I'm like, ugh, I don't know. I'm certainly not going to pay for it, but, you know, maybe I'll open a couple boxes. See what happens. Anyways, catch you guys next week.